So you've tried builder gel, your nails are starting to grow out, and you need to do a fill, but how the heck are you going to do that? What's up, nail crew? It's Nicole, your fellow nail obsessed DIYer. Today we are going to talk about how to use an e-file. We're going to do two different bits, compare them on how they file down the builder gel, and we're going to get all ready using that e-file for a new builder gel fill. The first bit that I'm using is the Pana Shank 5-in-1 carbide bit, and I use it in fine. Now, it's doing its job of taking off the builder gel, but as I go through my nails, you'll be able to see that it's not taking it off very evenly. Like you can see when I pulled my thumb a little bit closer to the screen that there's kind of bumps and divots as I'm taking this off. So typically what I use this bit for is to go around my cuticles when I don't want to use my really sharp pan a bit to clean up my cuticles after dipping. I'll use this bit if I'm really tired and I know I'm probably gonna cut myself with the other one, but I wanted to see how this worked for a builder gel fill. No matter what bit you're using to remove builder gel, dip, or whatever you're doing, you always wanna keep your bit moving. If you keep it in one spot for too long, it's going to make your nails feel warm. Anytime you feel that heat, that could mean a few things. One, you are pressing too hard into your nails. Two, you're staying in the same spot of your nails for too long or three, your bit is not at a high enough speed. And I know that sounds really scary. When I first started using an e-file, it seemed crazy that people use their e-file as fast as they did. But now that I've been using it for, I think it's like three and a half years now, I realized that, and I realized this a bit ago, uh, I probably realized this about like a, maybe like six months, a year into doing, into using an e-file. When you use the e-file at slow speeds, you actually have to press harder into your nail, which is going to cause that burning. You can could cause more issues with your nails if you're using it at a speed that's too slow. So when you're removing any kind of product, whether I'm doing a dip powder removal or a builder gel removal, I typically have the speed between 20 and 25,000 RPM. That's a really good fit to make sure that your product is flying off your nails and you're not having to press down. So you're basically going to just skim the top of your nail with the bit and if the product is coming off, that's how you know that it's working. Now, if you really are uncomfortable with having your drill bit that high, you just have to realize that it's going to take a lot longer. So you can do it at like maybe 15,000 RPMs, but you still want to do the same thing. You barely want to be touching the surface of the product to be having the dip like or builder gel be flying off. So it's just going to be a lot slower if you keep the bit at the slower level. This next bit that I'm using here, the one that I'm doing my right hand with, is the Pana Safety Coarse Carbide Bit. So both bits are carbide, but one is a safety carbide bit and the other one is the five-in-one and it's a fine bit. For me, I have found that whether I'm removing dip powder or builder gel, the coarse Pana a safety bit is my absolute favorite bit. I have tried so many recommendations from people like ones that nail techs have recommended on Instagram and none of them have worked as well for me like the Pana safety course bit. I'm sure if you buy like some really you know expensive bits you might be able to use different kinds but for me just buying them off Amazon works really well like I replace them every couple months when they start to go bad and I usually have like a backup one just in case. So something that's super important when you're removing any kind of product is you don't actually touch your natural nails with the e-file. This coarse bit is not one of the ones that you're going to touch your natural nails with. The only bit that I use on my natural nails is a high grit sanding band. I don't use any of these coarse bits or anything but sanding bands on my natural nails. I learned that from Susie's Nail Career Education off of YouTube that you should only use sanding bands on your natural nails and that's what I've always done. And this way you're not going to damage your nails because if you try to use one of these coarse removal bits on your natural nails you are going to damage them really badly so i'm very careful when i'm using my e-file that i'm only going over the builder jet areas you know i won't use this on my natural nail at all and as i'm like going down my nail with it i'm very very careful not to get it on my natural nail so then i'll switch right over to my sanding bands i'm using a 240 grit sanding band i like those because they're really high grit which means means they are softer. They're not as gritty. They're not as rough. So I like to use those when I'm on my natural nails. And I like to use them to kind of smooth out the top of the builder gel if there were any divots before I go through and do the fill. I don't want to have a bunch of ridges in my builder gel before I go do a fill because then you're going to struggle to get an e as even of an application. So 
want the, you don't want the top of the old builder gel to be super smooth, but you want it to be even. So I make sure that I even it up, but I don't smooth it down so much that then there's nothing for the new builder gel to grip onto. And I like to go around my entire nail with it. I have already pushed back my cuticles before I even started using this. And I like to use the sanding bands to remove any lifting. It's a really nice option to remove any lifting if you have any on your builder gel, because then you're not damaging your natural nails since you're using the sanding band. And no matter what bit you're using, you have to be really careful. You have to be really gentle. You don't want to be super rough on any part of your nail because that's how you can damage it with an e-file. If you're still struggling with basic builder gel application, make sure you check out the pinned comment. I have a link to my builder gel 101, the ultimate guide for applying builder gel overlays at home, and it will give you so much information. It's over 48 pages of everything you need to know from prep to application to removal. Then I like to go around my cuticles with one of the little ball bits, and I am barely touching my cuticles because you don't want to push back so far that then you're getting like way deep back into your skin so I just ever so slightly go around at like 8,000 rpms and just touch around my cuticles to make sure that they're nice and clean I absolutely love this little ball bit I feel like it really helps with getting better retention for my builder gel or any kind of mani that I am doing because it ensures that there are no cuticles stuck on my natural nails then I like to go through and really spray my nails with isopropyl alcohol to make sure they are clean and ready for the next application make sure you check out this next video where I go over how to do a builder gel overlay on your natural nails thanks so much for joining me today nail crew